Well, hey everybody, welcome to Crown Point Church Online. My name is Jeremy and I'm the student ministries pastor and I hope you've had the best Christmas ever. We're so excited to connect with you and hope that this content will be one of the highlights of your Christmas season. If you're watching today for the first time, we're really glad you're with us and we'd love to hear from you. If you would text the word NEW to 816-623-1995 and let us know that you're here with us. And don't forget to join the conversation in the comment section below. Well, hey, before we continue, I wanna tell you about a few things coming up that you should be aware of. Beginning January 1st, Pastor Dennis will be leading us as a church through an extensive Bible reading plan. We believe that the practice of reading scripture has the ability to change our lives, and we wanna invite you to join us on this challenge. You can follow the link in the comments to sign up through the YouVersion Bible app and get a sneak peek of what's in store beginning January 1st. Next Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, we made it. We'll be back in the building. We hope you enjoy church at home today, but we'd love to see you in person next week. We believe there's something special about meeting face-to-face -face as a church, and that's why we're continuing to take as many precautions as necessary to ensure everyone's health and safety when we gather. So, next Sunday, January 3rd, 10 a.m., we're planning to have an incredible time. We hope to see you then. Also, throughout the month of January, Pastor Dennis will be sharing what's on his heart for our church in the year 2021. Whether you meet in person or you watch online, we want to encourage you to tune in each week to hear from our pastor about the exciting things that God is doing right here at Crown Point Church. And finally, we want to thank you for your generosity. If you'd like to contribute to what we're doing here at Crown Point, there are three ways that you can give. For more details, follow the link in the description or visit crownpointchurch.com give. Thank you in advance for partnering with us as we go into our world to spread the hope of Jesus Christ. Oh 
Thanks for joining us in worship. Would you pray with me? Father, I'm so glad that you sent your son Jesus. I'm thankful for Christmas and all that it means. And I pray for those who maybe are struggling during this season, whether it's just they weren't able to have the family together they wanted, or maybe Christmas is a difficult time because of lost loved ones, or maybe finances are tough or some other reason. We ask that you would come right now, that you would change those situations, that you would, you would enter those relationships, that you would make things the way they should be. We, we give you praise for that and we trust you for those answers. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my name is Pastor Dennis and I'm glad you joined us today. And it's a privilege to pastor Crown Point Church and be with you. And I hope you enjoyed Christmas Eve. And if you didn't get to see the special that we put on for Christmas Eve, you'll want to go back and look at that. It was a fun time to make and, and it was just a special time. And you know, I, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. What I'd love for you to do is maybe write in the chat something that made Christmas wonderful for you. Maybe it was something you gave or maybe something you received or something that happened or, you know, just whatever made it wonderful. And maybe you weren't able to celebrate with everybody you wanted, but I'm sure there was something that, that you could share with us. You know, and I, I don't know about you, but for me, I never want the Christmas season to end. And, you know, it seems like there's such a big buildup for it and the, the stores get ready even before we're ready and decorations are up and... But, but there's something about it. I just, I just don't want it to end. And it's not the gift giving or the buying, really. It's, 
It's the attitude that pervades everything. It just seems like people are just more joyous. They're more generous. They're, they're ready to give. It seems like they're nicer. They smile more. It seems like, you know, they're, they're saying Merry Christmas and they're saying um, Happy Holidays. And it's just that attitude. I want to see that more and more. And I want it to carry over into the whole new year. It seems like, you know, bells are ringing and stores are bustling and festive and houses are all lit up. In my neighborhood, it seems like there's more Christmas lights than ever. And I love that. It just adds a cheer to the, to the whole neighborhood. And I, I don't know about you, but I wonder sometimes, what is that Christmas spirit? You know, why do we do all the giving in the first place? And of course, it's because Jesus was given presents. And as we said last week, we're never more like Jesus than when we give. And, you know, you've been generous. You as a church have been generous. And I'm so grateful for that. We have met families' needs within the church. I mean, there's times where we were preparing to meet a need. And then you as the church family met the need before we could even do it. And I love that. And I know that, uh, you know, many of us, we give not, not just because we've been given to, but we give because God has given us the greatest gift of all. Think about it. We're generous because of God's generosity. We are loving because he gave in love. And it's a selflessness that is, it's embodied in the idea that, that, you know, we give during this time of year without expecting anything in return. We treat people like the way that they should be treated and how they deserve to be treated. We treat people with grace. Even if they come at us with entitlement or anger or frustration, we still return grace to them. And we do that because grace has been given to us. We look past their frail humanity and we respond like God does because even though people knew him or didn't know him, they didn't recognize who he was and he gave even though they knew he would abuse and reject him. I think in the book of John, chapter one, verse 10, where it says, he came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. Many people like that sweet giving part of Christmas, but they don't know him. They don't know the gift and they didn't recognize him then and they even rejected him. John goes on in verse 11, he says, he came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who received him and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but with a birth that comes from God. That's the Christmas spirit that I want to stay all year long because it is up to us. God gave the gift of Jesus. He gave that to us. And now we give that to everybody that we come in contact with it. We need to help people see that it's not just for a few weeks and we need to show them how to live that way day in, day out. We do it by our attitudes when life is good, of course, but also when life is bad and how we respond to hardship and the difficulties that come when we disagree with people politically. It's the way we treat them that shows them who Jesus is. Now, we we all see problems in the world, and obviously we have different solutions for those. We need to show them that, that, that the gift and what it means to have the Christmas spirit is to spread that joy all year long and that that's the answer. Something else about Christmas that I want to last all year long is the whole idea of Emmanuel. That was a name given to Jesus because it literally meant God with us. And the fact is, he's here with us. He experienced life with us, the hardships, the joys, the ups, the downs, and he never leaves us. He's always with us. Jesus was given as a gift to set us free from our life of bondage and sin. Most people don't even realize that their sin is sin. They, I think it's after you've sinned for a long time, it just becomes normal. It's like walking by a mess in your garage and you intend to clean it up, but then when you don't, after a while, you don't even see it anymore. We've become comfortable with those things. It's as if they're trapped in a cave and they don't remember what the light is even like. It's like they're living a shadow of what life could actually be. It's, it's like a fish doesn't know it's wet. They're trapped in sin and they don't even recognize it. And they, they have these fleeting moments of happiness rather than the true joy and contentment with which Jesus offers. And if, if they were shown the true light, a lot of times it, it blinds their eyes or makes them uncomfortable. Christ offers true freedom from that and gives us a chance to be who he created us to be. So we keep reaching for that apple, just like Eve. And the enemies told us that you can be just like God and make up the rules for yourself and do whatever you want to please yourself. And Jesus says, if you surrender yourself, you actually live and you give for others, you will find true freedom. St. Augustine said it like this, you love God, 
then do whatever you want. Because if you truly love him, what you want to do will be those good things. As I was reading in scripture recently, I came across this passage in Colossians, which I never thought of in the Christmas sense before. But this really, it personifies Christianity. And he says that you'll clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from God rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. That's the peace that Christmas offers. That's the Christmas spirit that I want to see all year long. And my challenge to you today is will you take Christmas into the new year and live like it's Christmas every day? Will you put others first? Will you pray for those who insult you and use you? Will you respond with grace like God has given you when people treat you wrong? Will you be humble and, and like Christ did, uh, came, he came in the, in the form of a humble baby. Will you be that humble? Will you be awed like the shepherds were when God announced the birth of Christ? Will you bow and submit yourself like the, king of, the, the three kings did to the king of kings and the Lord of lords? It's a heavy question. I wanna pray with you for a minute. Maybe, maybe you've walked with Christ before, but you've left him for a while and you wanna return. Maybe you've never walked with Christ. You've never allowed him in your life, but you realize this is what you really need, that this would be truly Christmas all year long. Maybe you're a Christian and you've been a Christian a long time, but you realize that you have not been living like this, but this is something you need. Would you pray with me for a minute? Father, we come before you. We, we, we come before you as humans who are frail and we make mistakes and we're sorry for the things that we have done that are wrong. We, we need your forgiveness that you have given to us with that gift of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. We're sorry for the things we've done wrong. We want your forgiveness. We want to live for you, with you, with you helping us live the right way. We turn our hearts and lives over to you and help us change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for 2021. Maybe you've been afraid of what might come, or maybe 2020 was so crazy that you think, what could possibly go wrong next? Or maybe you're afraid of lockdowns or whatever it is. I just want to tell you this. We don't have to live in fear. We don't serve a God that, that is fearful. He's already been there. He knows what's to come. He never promised us an easy life, but what he promised us is that he would walk with us through whatever life brings. So I hope you're with me on that and that you will live Christianity or Christ Christmas every single day. I want to tell you too, if you're part of Crown Point Church, in the next few weeks, we're starting a series that'll talk about a mission and a vision for 2021. And I hope you'll join us live next week here in the church and uh, bring your Christmas spirit.
Well, that's it for this week. Once again, we hope you've had an amazing experience with us today. If you'd like to catch up on any of the past messages you may have missed, or you're looking for more details about anything we've covered today, go to crownpointchurch.com and stay up to date. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media and let all your friends and family know that Crown Point is the place to be.